The Carnegie Endowment for International Peace (CEIP) is a foreign policy think tank with centers in Washington D.C., Moscow, Beirut, Beijing, Brussels, and New Delhi. The organization describes itself as being dedicated to advancing cooperation between nations and promoting active international engagement by the United States. Founded in 1910 by Andrew Carnegie, its work is not formally associated with any political party of the United States. In the University of Pennsylvania's 2015 Global Go to Think Tanks report, Carnegie is ranked the third most influential think tank in the world, after the Brookings Institution and Chatham House, its headquarters building, prominently located on the Embassy Row section of Massachusetts Avenue, was completed in 1989 on a design by architecture firm Smith, Hinkman and Grills. It also hosts the Embassy of Papua New Guinea in the U.S. The chairperson of Carnegie's Board of Trustees is former U.S. Secretary of Commerce Penny Pritzker, and the organization's president is former U.S. Deputy Secretary of State William J. Burns. Organizational history Establishment Andrew Carnegie, like other leading internationalists of his day, believed that war could be eliminated by stronger international laws and organizations. I am drawn more to this cause than to any, he wrote in 1907. Carnegie's single largest commitment in this field was his creation of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. On his 75th birthday, November 25, 1910, Andrew Carnegie announced the establishment of the endowment with a gift of $10 million worth of first mortgage bonds, paying a 5% rate of interest. The interest income generated from these bonds was to be used to fund a new think tank dedicated to advancing the cause of world peace. In his deed of gift, presented in Washington on December 14, 1910, Carnegie charged trustees to use the fund to "...hasten the abolition of international war, the foulest blot upon our civilization," and he gave his trustees "...the widest discretion as to the measures and policy they shall from time to time adopt." In carrying out the purpose of the fund, Carnegie chose longtime advisor Elihu Root, senator from New York and former Secretary of War and of State, to be the endowment's first president. Awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1912, Root served until 1925. Founder trustees included Harvard University President Charles William Eliot, philanthropist Robert S. Brookings, former U.S. Ambassador to Great Britain Joseph Hodges Choate, former Secretary of State John W. Foster, and Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching President Henry Smith Pritchett. The endowment was organized into divisions Division of Economics and History the first 50 years, 1910–1960 At the outset of America's involvement in World War I in 1917, the Carnegie Endowment Trustees unanimously declared, the most effective means of promoting durable international peace is to prosecute the war against the imperial government of Germany to final victory for democracy. In December 1918, Carnegie Endowment Secretary James Brown Scott and four other endowment personnel, including James T. Shotwell, sailed with President Woodrow Wilson on the USS George Washington to join the peace talks in France. Carnegie is often remembered for having built Carnegie Libraries, which were a major recipient of his largesse. The libraries were usually funded not by the endowment but by other Carnegie Trusts, operating mainly in the English-speaking world. However, after World War I the endowment built libraries in Belgium, France and Serbia in three cities which had been badly damaged in the war. On July 14, 1923, the Hague Academy of International Law, an initiative of the endowment, was formally opened in the Peace Palace at The Hague. The Peace Palace had been built by the Carnegie Foundation Netherlands in 1913 to house the Permanent Court of Arbitration and a Library of International Law. In 1925, Nicholas Murray Butler succeeded Elihu Root as president of the endowment. For his work, including his involvement with the Kellogg Bryan Pact, Butler was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1931. In November 1944, the Carnegie Endowment published Raphael Lemkin's Axis Rule in Occupied Europe Laws of Occupation Analysis of Government Proposals for Redress. The work was the first to bring the word genocide into the global lexicon. 
In April 1945, James T. Shotwell, director of the Carnegie Endowment's Division of Economics and History, served as chairman of the semi-official consultants to the U.S. delegation at the San Francisco Conference to draw up the United Nations Charter. As chairman, Shotwell pushed for an amendment to establish a permanent United Nations Commission on Human Rights, which exists to this day. In December 1945, Butler stepped down after 20 years as president and chairman of the Board of Trustees. Butler was the last living member of the original board selected by Andrew Carnegie in 1910. John Foster Dulles was elected to succeed Butler as chairman of the Board of Trustees, where he served until fellow board member Dwight D. Eisenhower was elected president of the U.S. in 1952 and appointed Dulles Secretary of State. In 1946, Alger Hiss succeeded Butler as president of the endowment but resigned in 1949 after being denounced as a communist and a spy by Whitaker Chambers and on December 15, 1948, indicted by the United States Department of Justice on two counts of perjury. Hiss was replaced in the interim by James T. Shotwell. In 1947, the Carnegie Endowment's headquarters were moved closer to the United Nations in New York City, while the Washington office at Peter Parker House 700 Jackson Place, NW, became a subsidiary branch. In 1949, the Washington branch was shuttered. In 1950, the Endowment Board of Trustees appointed Joseph E. Johnson, a historian and former State Department official, to take the helm. The Cold War years, 1960–1990 In 1963, the Carnegie Endowment reconstituted its international law program in order to address several emerging international issues, the increase in significance and impact of international organizations, the technological revolution that facilitated the production of new military weaponry, the spread of communism, the surge in newly independent states, and the challenges of new forms of economic activity, including global corporations and intergovernmental associations. The program resulted in the New York-based Study Group on the United Nations and the International Organization Study Group at the European Center in Geneva. In 1970, Thomas L. Hughes became the sixth president of the Carnegie Endowment. Hughes moved the endowment's headquarters from New York to Washington, D.C., and closed the endowment's European Center in Geneva. The Carnegie Endowment acquired full ownership of Foreign Policy magazine in the spring of 1978. The endowment published foreign policy for 30 years, moving it from a quarterly academic journal to a bi-monthly glossy covering the nexus of globalization and international policy. The magazine was sold to the Washington Post in 2008. In 1981, Carnegie Endowment associate Fred Bergson co-founded the Institute for International Economics—today known as the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Citing the growing danger of a nuclear arms race between India and Pakistan, Thomas L. Hughes formed an 18-member task force on non-proliferation and South Asian security to propose methods for reducing the growing nuclear tensions on the subcontinent. In 1989, two former Carnegie associates, Barry Blackman and Michael Crepin, founded the Henry L. Stimson Center. Topic: <laughs> After the Cold War, 1990 to 2000. In 1991, Morton Abramowitz was named the seventh president of the endowment. Abramowitz, previously a State Department official, focused the endowment's attention on Russia in the post-Soviet era. In this spirit, the Carnegie Endowment opened the Carnegie Moscow Center in 1994 as a home of Russian scholar-commentators. Jessica Matthews joined the Carnegie Endowment as its eighth president in May 1997. Under her leadership, Carnegie's goal was to become the first multinational, global think tank. In 2000, Jessica Matthews announced the creation of the Migration Policy Institute MPI, headed by Dimitrios Papadimitriou which became the first standalone think tank concerned with international migration. The Global Think Tank, 2000–present As first laid out with the Global Vision in 2007, the Carnegie Endowment aspired to be the first global think tank. Jessica Matthews said that her aim was to make Carnegie the place that brings what the world thinks into thinking about U.S. policy and to communicate that thinking to a global audience. 
During Matthews' tenure as president, the Carnegie Endowment launched the Carnegie Middle East Center in Beirut 2006, Carnegie Europe in Brussels 2007, and the Carnegie Tsinghua Center at the Tsinghua University in Beijing 2010. Additionally, in partnership with the Al-Farabi Kazakh National University, Carnegie established the Al-Farabi Carnegie Program on Central Asia in Kazakhstan in late 2011. In February 2015, Jessica T. Matthews stepped down as president of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace after 18 years. William J. Burns, former U.S. Deputy Secretary of State, became Carnegie's ninth president. In April 2016, the sixth international center, Carnegie India, opened in New Delhi. Topic: Officers. Topic Board of Trustees Penny Pritzker, Chairman of PSP Partners and Pritzker Realty Group, Former Secretary of Commerce Muhammad A. L. Aryan, Vice Chairman and Chief Economic Advisor, Allianz S. E. Ayman Asfari, Group Chief Executive, Petrofac Limited Elizabeth F. Bagley, Former Special Representative for the U.S. Department of State, Chairman of SBI, Cellular One Bill Bradley, Managing Director, Allen & Company David Burke, Co-Founder, CEO and Managing Director, Makina Capital Management William J. Burns, President, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace Stephen A. Denning, Chairman, General Atlantic Harvey V. Feinberg, President, Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation Jane D. Hartley, Former U.S. Ambassador to France and Communications Executive Patricia House, Vice Chairman of the Board, C3IOT Maha Ibrahim, General Partners, Canaan Partners Walter B. Keelholz, Chairman of the Board of Directors, Swiss Re Limited. Scott D. Malkin, Chairman, Value Retail PLC Raymond J. McGuire, Global Head, Corporate and Investment Banking, City Sunil Barty Middle, Founder and Chairman, Barty Enterprises Clark Murphy, CEO, Russell Reynolds Associates Adebayo Ogunlesi, Chairman and Managing Partner, Global Infrastructure Partners Kenneth E. Olivier, Past Chairman and CEO, Dodge and Cox Funds Jonathan Oppenheimer, Director, Oppenheimer Generations Catherine James Paglia, Director, Enterprise Asset Management Victoria Ransom, former CEO, Wildfire and Director of Product, Google L. Raphael Reef, President, Massachusetts Institute of Technology George Sigular, Founding Partner and Managing Director, Sigular Guff and Company Ratan N. Tata, Chairman, Sir Ratan Tata Trust and Navabai Ratan Tata Trust and Sir Dorabji Tata Trust and the Allied Trusts ASO Otavishan, former CEO, Sinksort, Inc. Daniel Vasella, Honorary Chairman, Novartis International Ag Wong Chaoyang, Founding Chairman and CEO, China Equity Group Rohan S. Wirasing, General Counsel, Citigroup Inc. Yichen Zhang, Chairman, Chief Executive Officer, Citic Capital Holdings Limited Robert Zolik, Chairman, Alliance Bernstein Carnegie Global Centers Topic Carnegie Endowment Headquarters in Washington, D.C. The Carnegie Endowment Office in Washington, D.C., is home to eight programs, the Nuclear Policy Program, Russia and Eurasia Program, South Asia Program, Democracy and Rule of Law Program, Asia Program, Energy and Climate Program, Middle East Program, and Europe Program. William J. Burns, is the current president of the Carnegie Endowment. Topic. Carnegie Moscow Center In 1993, the endowment launched the Carnegie Moscow Center, with the belief that, "...in today's world a think tank whose mission is to contribute to global security, stability, and prosperity requires a permanent presence and a multinational outlook at the core of its operations." The center's stated goals are to embody and promote the concepts of disinterested social science research and the dissemination of its results in post-Soviet Russia and Eurasia, to provide a free and open forum for the discussion and debate of critical national, regional and global issues, and to further cooperation and strengthen relations between Russia and the United States by explaining the interests, objectives and policies of each. From 2006 until December 2008, the center was led by current United States Assistant Secretary of State for Verification, Compliance, and Implementation Rose Gottmuller. The center is currently headed by Dmitry Trenin, its first Russian director. Topic: 
Carnegie Middle East Center The Carnegie Middle East Center was established in Beirut, Lebanon in November, 2006. The center aims to better inform the process of political change in the Arab Middle East and deepen understanding of the complex economic and security issues that affect it. As of 2016, the current managing director of the center is Maha Yahya. Carnegie Europe Founded in 2007 by Fabrice Pothier, Carnegie Europe is the European centre of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. From its newly expanded presence in Brussels, Carnegie Europe combines the work of its research platform with the fresh perspectives of Carnegie's centres in Washington, Moscow, Beijing, and Beirut, bringing a unique global vision to the European policy community. Through publications, articles, seminars, and private consultations, Carnegie Europe aims to foster new thinking on the daunting international challenges shaping Europe's role in the world. Carnegie Europe is currently directed by Tomas Vlasek. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Carnegie Tsinghua Center for Global Policy. The Carnegie Tsinghua Center for Global Policy was established at Tsinghua University in Beijing in 2010. The center's focuses include China's foreign relations, international economics and trade, climate change and energy, nonproliferation and arms control, and other global and regional security issues such as North Korea, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran. The current director of the center is Paul Hanley. Topic. Carnegie India In April 2016, Carnegie India opened in New Delhi, India. The center's focuses include the political economy of reform in India, foreign and security policy, and the role of innovation and technology in India's internal transformation and international relations. The current director of the center is C. Raja Mohan. See also International Economics Bulletin List of peace activists Footnotes Further reading Patterson, David S. Andrew Carnegie's Quest for World Peace. Proceedings of the American Philosophical Society 114.5 371 371-383, online. <laughs> External links Official website Publications Foreign Policy Pro et contra.